our Wednesday wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today is also the fourth uh, Wednesday of Padtober. Let me just bring up Padtober, 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 Padtober. There, there it is. is. Uh, this is the fourth Wednesday of Padtober where we are giving away a pad set for uh, each week when you take the hashtag Padtober and put it into the comments below. So for those of you who did this last week, we took all your names, we put them into a hat, and the winner of this week's giveaway, this is for a clarinet pad set. Uh, it is Graham Logan. Graham Logan, you are the right, winner cool. for this week. Uh, if you guys, so Graham, send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and we'll get you set up with your prize. For the rest of you, if you want to be entered into the drawing for this week, we'll do the drawing next week. Uh, just put Padtober in the comments below, and we'll enter you into the drawing. Uh, we also have a clarinet basics class coming up, so if you are getting into the world of clarinet repair and you want to learn all of the basics, we've also added uh, some clarinet tone hole work as well as crack pinning work to the clarinet basics course. So today you can get 10% off the tuition for that. Uh, just go to musicmedic.com and go to our education section. Clarinet basics is the course, and I can put a link to that below. I'm just going to make a note of that about linking to the course because uh, I didn't do that yet. Uh, but find that course and sign up for it today, and you'll get 10% off the tuition, which is a pretty good deal um, for this course that's coming up in November. Uh, so, Leroy, we've got, we're headed into the world of clarinet repair. Yes. We are going to be going over a relatively simple upgrade mm -hmm. uh, for pro and intermediate clarinets that you could most likely do yourself. Um, this is where we take a plastic pin and change it to a, a, a more stout carbon fiber pin. Yes. Um, so if you could, let's just go over what these pins are sure. and how they function and how they could break. And then we'll go over how to replace them. Cool. Uh, well, the, this pin, if you look at this key right here, you can see that little, that little white area coming out. That's the pin, that's the pin I'm talking about. It's made of uh, plastic or Delrin material. And what it does is on the back side of this instrument here, you can see these couple arms right here. So what ends up happening is I'm gonna put this key back on that section. The rod right here. If I can see, then we'll be good to go. So now it's together. I'm gonna to push this key down. You can see that it's actually moving that key now, the back of the arm, and it's opening that F sharp, C sharp key. So basically that pin completes a linkage section for those two keys right there. And that's what those pins do. Okay, very good. So you've got a couple of different scenarios there when we can um, change them. But first I wanted to ask you, I had this written down. Yes. Uh, as far as student clarinets mm, yeah. do you what's the do you recommend using these carbon fiber pins on a student clarinet versus pro or intermediate i actually would not um for the main purpose that the uh the plastic delrin ones that are comes like standard stock in a lot of these instruments they're actually designed to break um for i'll say to save damage of the key section okay so if if this lever gets pushed excessively, it'll actually break that off. And what it does is it helps prevent the, the bending too much of the lever and like the distortion of the back arm of the key. Okay. Now, if you're more of a professional and intermediate player, most of those people, and they're not students, they, had, they, they are more aware of what's going on with their instrument. So it's not as important with that. And the other thing with these plastic ones is, although they're designed to break with excessive force, just because of the design and the material and the size of it, sometimes just over time they'll break. Mm. So up if you're like an intermediate professional player, upgrading to the carbon fiber ones are cool because you don't ever have to worry about that if you're taking care of your instrument properly. Okay, awesome. Let's go over the procedure for changing the pins. Okay, so there are two scenarios, two, <laughs> two, scenarios uh, in which um, you'll need or want to replace these pins. The first one we'll go over is the easiest one. So the pin is still intact and it is just sticking out of the, of the key right there. These are just press fit in. They're not glued, they're not bolted in. 
nothing. So it's very, very simple to remove these. So you can take um, Niplex parallel pliers or any kind of pliers that will grip this evenly and basically just do this and pull and there's the pin. Okay. And if you look really closely, there's a hole in that key where that pin slides into. So now what we're going to do is that's the new pin. That's the carbon fiber pin. And it's gray, that little widget, that little gray widget, that is the carbon fiber pin. Okay. So I will hold that. So you're using parallel pliers to take the pin out and install the new pin. Correct. It, that allows me to get a good grip on the pin without damaging it. And it's a lot easier than using my fingers too. Okay. So all I have to do at this point is go out here, line the pin up with the hole, push, and it's pretty well in there. But what I like to do is just to make sure I'll get a little, little mallet, nothing crazy. And I just, and I'll just give it a couple taps to make sure that it's nice and press fit in there. So there's the pin sticking out the correct length. And then at this point, you basically just reinstall it exactly the same way that you took it off or that I installed it prior. And as, as you can see, the interaction with the key still works perfectly and still works the way it should. Okay, very cool. So you that's the kind of the standard installation when mm -hmm. everything is where it should be. Absolutely. And then what's the other scenario that we have to that we have to consider? The other scenario is I'm going to take this off just so we can do this. I'm going to remove I'm going to re now remove this pin and it'll show you again how easy that just comes out of there. So let's just press fit in there. And just for ease here, I am going to push that back in. So we're dealing now with the plastic one and the standard stock one again. I am going to excessively recreate a bad scenario. So I'm basically just going to take this and it's going to it's going to have an oopsie moment. Okay. So don't try this at home. Yeah. If it'll let it go. It won't go. Oh no. Hmm. Surprisingly good little material. Yep. The other one I broke this morning was super easy. <laughs> Go figure. That's, so, how, that's how you know you're on live TV. So we're going to do this instead. I'm going to actually take a little, just go ahead and cut it off. Yep. So what you're doing is what somebody should not do. Yeah, ne never, yeah, <laughs> never do this. But what we're doing is. Cutting the head off, which would kind of simulate uh, it being broken off in the in the key arm. Yeah, and this then... this is definitely the do as I do as I say, not as I do moment. Okay, but what so, does that get? What does that result look like? So here we go. It's basically pretty much flush at the end, and that's nine times out of ten what ends up happening is it's flushed. You can't grip it with tweezers. You can't grip it with pliers. You could try to dig it out with a poker or a screwdriver, but trying to do that when it's pressed fit in there is really, really difficult. So usually what I end up doing is I will take an air torch, like this little bad boy here, or a regular torch. Uh, either one works. Um, the regular torch, you just have to make sure to wave the, the, the heat evenly on the key so it doesn't burn or damage the, the finish. So at right. this point, I will just kind of lay the heat on that, lay the heat on there. And then at some point you're going to see, you're going to see it start coming out of the end, like a little worm, kind of like those little things from 4th of July. And it's. And so the nice thing about the air torch is you can just lay that up against the key. Oh. You don't have to worry about rotating. Oh, there it is. There it was. See how fast that was. So now Very that cool. it, now that it's stuck out a little bit, you can just take your pliers grab it and pull it out. And then that little melty part is right there. At this point, there might, and there probably more than likely will be some residue in that hole. So then you would just take your a poker, stick it in there, kind of dig out the little excess of stuff. Once that's all done, same procedure as before, you would take the new carbon fiber pin, 
put it inside the hole, make sure that it's pressed fit correctly, and reinstall it like nothing ever happened. Now, um, Leroy, there was also in this kit that we, you know, we, we sell these for Wes Rice, yes. um, who, who manufactures them. Um, the kit comes with pins, but mm -hmm. it also comes with some material to take out play. Can you show them yes, that absolutely. scenario and, and how to deal with that? Absolutely. So, so what would end up happening is because I didn't have time to dig any of this out, I will I will just kind of go over this. So when we when we installed the pin before and we just kind of put it back into that hole, if this is back in this section, I mean again, there's no pin here, but so this is going to be horribly excessive. Okay. Let's say there's say there's movement like this between the keys. Okay. Okay. What, what needs to happen, and that may, what that'll tell you is that the hole on this side of the key, where the pin actually interacts, and if you look really closely, there's those, those two holes there. What you'll wanna do is the little kit, the kit comes with um, little rounds of the bladder skin, like this. So what you'll end up doing is you'll basically use a tweezer because it is super easy to hold, and these are little small pieces. You'll just slide it right in between where the key goes, and then you'll take that key with the pin on it and basically push the skin through that hole. With the nub. With the nubbin. Of the pin. Right. Okay. What that does is that little, that little bit of thickness from that bladder skin will help remove the excess play. Okay. And depending on how big or hogged out or worn that hole is, one piece, 90% of the time is enough. Okay. If it's really damaged or, or somebody got their hands on it and drilled the hole out or did something weird, you might need to use two pieces, which is totally fine. Um, the key is to make sure that the, the up and down play on that key is as removed as much as possible. Okay. Okay, excellent. Well, Leroy, thank you for that demonstration. This has been our Wednesday Wisdom, where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band and stunt repair. Make sure you put the hashtag Padtober into the comments below so that you can be entered into the pad set giveaway uh, for next week. That'll be the last one of Padtober. Then we'll switch uh, themes in November. Uh, make sure you, that you like and subscribe to these streams so we can keep uh, putting them out there for you. And that's going to do it for now. So until next time, happy repairing.